All right, we're here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm tower. And last time we were in here, we gave a huge colorful feeding with lots of banana peels, strawberries, and some blueberries. We also gave a good top feeding of pulverized oats. And I actually saw a lot of worms two days ago as I was peeling back this newspaper and putting some babies from our cocoon nursery in here. And wow, it looks like they've laid a lot of castings up here. And then finally, we are gonna add some cheese to this bin. Well, probably not the cheese you were expecting, but we are going to add dairy-free, vegan, cheddar-style, finely shredded cheese. So more on that when we get to the feeding. All right, let's get right to it. I can definitely see a patch of castings right here, and it's actually depressed right here versus a lot more paper shreds here and here. So let's go ahead and dig right into that feeding zone and see what's in here. Now, last time we came in and checked the previous feeding, there were some leftover banana peels and we gave them even more. So we'll see if that's the case here. And I'm definitely seeing some, definitely seeing the banana peels. And let's see if we see some of the other stuff like, oh, here we go. Here is an avocado pit that we kind of broke apart last time. So that's still there. And I'll just kind of keep digging down and seeing, and yep, lots of banana peels. They've definitely eaten the fleshy part of it, and they're leaving just the, the peel, and then they're also leaving the top portions that are more dense. And yeah, really, really great showing here for these worms all throughout the bananas. Now, I'm not seeing any blueberries yet, and I'm not seeing any strawberries, and that's kind of to be expected. Here's that broccoli stem that we keep running into. They ate all the flesh out of it and what's left is the fibers. So let's just kind of keep pulling apart and seeing if we find some of those blueberries. I thought maybe they would be in here still because I didn't burst them. I just kind of put them in and they had kind of gotten molded. So that's always good for the worms. But yep, lots of banana. Let's go through over here and see what we have. And oh yeah, check it out. Just a ton, a ton of worms in here. And these are both red wigglers and blue worms. You can kind of see this one right here is a red wiggler. It's got like a tan underbody. And then over here, it's a little darker. And this right here is a blue worm. And they're kind of the same color all throughout. About the same length, but they are skinnier. And they move much faster than the red wigglers do. You can see the difference. This one moving, although I slowed down. And then this one just kind of chilling right there. Here's some more moving ones right here. These are blue worms, these are red wigglers. All right, let's keep going through it. I think they've done a really good job on this feeding. They're just kind of leaving the slow foods and right here, another great showing of worms. And they're making really quick castings of the food and the bedding. I'm really impressed with how quickly they're doing it. These worm towers are just fantastic, especially with the way I put the trays underneath first with just bedding and kind of let them get inoculated first. And then I bring it up to an active feeding tray after it's been down there for about 50 to 60 days. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig through the rest of this bin and see how the other areas are doing and air it out so that I'm not getting any kind of foul areas or anaerobic areas. And then we'll start on our feeding zone and get to that cheese. Oh, look at all that. Oh, I thought I was gonna be able to fast forward right away, but holy mackerel, check it out. That wasn't even in the feeding zone, that was on the edges. <laughs> check it out. Just again, just a ton of worms in this front corner there. They are all throughout this. Every square, sorry, every cubic centimeter, every cubic inch just has a ton of worms in it. Now, as I fluff this up and make a zone for the food, I always find that the bin looks like it has more volume than it does before. And that's because we're adding little air pockets in it when we fluff it up. And that helps the worms to get oxygen and helps the food also to decay in the proper way and not in an anaerobic way. So let's go ahead and add some of our bedding and then we'll get to the feeding. So we're gonna add a little bit of our cardboard shreds and newspaper shreds in here. And that's the bedding that we always add. And then I'm gonna add just some regular bedding that's on here because this feeding is not quite as big as before. And it also is not as moist because it's just this vegan cheese. 
And then I think I'm gonna add some of our amendments first. So we'll start with some pulverized oats. And these were just expired in my pantry. So I encourage you to look and see if you have any expired grains in your pantry. You can always feed them to your worm bins. And then I always like to add a little used coffee grounds as another food source for my worms. And I let them sit out for a couple weeks until it gets full and that allows mold, etc., to build up in here. And that's good food source for the worms as well. And then finally I add a little grit, which is just pulverized eggshells, which is good for the worms as they digest. They have gizzards and also good for my garden. And then finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, vegan cheese is gonna go down as their food source for this feeding. And I'll just kind of read some of the ingredients that are on here. It says it takes, it says it has filtered water, organic coconut oil, potato and cornstarch, expeller pressed canola oil, natural flavors, less than 2% of potato protein, calcium phosphate, sea salt, organic vegan cane sugar, organic vegetable glycerin, citric acid, sodium, citrate, lactic acid, sodium bicarbonate, for color, for color, for color. So some stuff in here that I wouldn't normally feed them, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm gonna save a little bit for the top feeding. So we'll know that we kind of put it towards the middle and we'll see how they do with this. This is gonna be really interesting. So we'll go ahead and bury this up and this is only part of the feeding, part of the experiment. We're also gonna put some on top. And if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd appreciate a like. And if you think you might wanna watch some more videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring that bell and you'll be notified when I do more videos. And I've got a couple other bins. I've got an outdoor worm bin and a tiny worm bin that I do different experiments in. Let's go ahead and check that out. Let's go ahead and put on the oats and then we'll add some more cheese. All right, so I've been really impressed with the top feedings and I come in here every two or three days and I see lots of worms gathered up on them at about the three to four day mark. And then when we come in and check in, they're all gone. So maybe I'll try and take a video of that when I'm adding babies for my cocoon nursery in here. Let's just go ahead and get this real good. And notice that I'm kind of putting it on lightly. I'm not putting big clumps because I found that if you just dump a bunch out, it'll clump up and they won't be able to get to the center of it. So I'm gonna take my advice with the cheese as well and just kind of spread it out a little bit. And maybe we'll put it in two lines to see if maybe we get some worm clusters around these two lines. But there we go. Let's see if we put vegan cheese in here, if the worms will eat it. And that way you'll know if you ever have any expired vegan cheese in your refrigerator, you can add it to your worm bins. So I hope everybody's doing well with their worm bins. And if you have a worm bin or have done different experiments with them, please, leave a message in the comments. Tell me what you've done or kind of what are the different things that you've fed that maybe people wouldn't think you could feed. And I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.